It yeah, okay. to be loading. We'll see here. Yes. It says YouTube is now streaming live. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be awesome. It says it here. It said, okay, we are redirected. And there we are. We are live on YouTube. Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'm, I'm going to just introduce you guys and Heather, I'm going to let you take off with it so I can start sharing over on, on Facebook what's happening here since uh, Facebook um, didn't help us out here. So yeah. we just want to welcome um, Karina Pataki. Pataki, right? All yeah, right. You did it. It's actually written here in the corner wrong. That's my fault. That's my okay. fault. But hey, uh, just it's an honor to have you on, Karina, and yes. just blessed to have some conversation with you beforehand and, and a couple of days ago. And uh, I'm just honored to get to know you. And Heather, you know, yeah. again, such an honor to have you on here. And Thank you and I were both working to get Karina on at the same time. Yes. And <laughs> so, it's lovely to be with you, Gail. Yeah, it's a blessing. So Heather, why don't you go ahead and uh, start uh, asking Karina some, some good questions, and I'm going to share this with a few other places. All right. Thank you, Gail. Hey, Karina, it's so hey. awesome to be with you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. Thank you to you, Heather and Gil, for having me on. What a pleasure and honor. So thank you. Oh, it is lovely to be able to spend time with you and to honor what God is doing in you and through you. I have admired you for a long time and I think um, one of the the major reasons for that is that, that you really wear your femininity with such honor such beauty such celebration I just love that in um, in a world where it can be quite difficult mm -hmm. as a woman especially in the the um, ecclesiastical sense right. there is a lot of male leadership and, and we don't have very many women right. leading right. and and you just have been um, a beacon of of love and of just just being the image of god in the female so um, i would just just love for you to, to say anything you would like to say about that Thank you so much uh, for saying that. I really appreciate it. You know, <clears throat> I grew up in um, a Romanian Pentecostal church where mm -hmm. everything was a sin. Absolutely everything. Every, every <laughs> session of beauty was a sin. You had to have yeah. your head covered, no makeup, you know, uh, very, wow. very strict. And <clears throat> just through my walk with the Lord, as I have gotten, you know, from a child to a teenager into my uh, young adulthood, I really, really knew the Lord. I mean, you know, I built a relationship with the Lord since I was a little girl. And <clears throat> it's interesting because um, the Lord showed me that that's not who he is. You know, that yeah. is not who he is. Now, there's the flip of the coin with that. You know, in everything, we have to have a balance. Yeah. The Lord is a, a God of balance in everything. At least that's how I see it. So yeah. we have two extremes. We have one extreme where we go into the holiness, you know, the religious bondage. And we have the yes. other extreme where I'm just going to go there. Okay. Where we as women use ourselves to operate. I'm just going to say it in a spirit of Jezebel and Delilah. Yeah. And we have to be so careful with that. So, um, you know, the Lord wants us to be beautiful and reflect him, but at the same time we can do it with honor and yeah. with honoring the Lord, honoring ourselves, honoring our husbands, honoring the men around, honoring the women around. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, the way I, um, the way my hair is and the way I look, it's all very prophetic. Because um, as we yes, were getting into it, you know, at the age of nine, when um, I came to America, I was filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And at this prayer meeting, <clears throat> the mantle of the prophetic fell on me. So here's a nine and a half year old little girl and the Lord will literally levitate me on my off of my knees, like two wow. to three feet off of my knees. Wow. Like a ball to like all the people that were at those meetings and just, you know, the Lord would just read their destiny scrolls. And here mm -hmm. I was nine and a half year old little girl. So, you know, um, <clears throat> All that to say, you know, uh, the Lord has taught me through this process that there is so much that he's put in us and we must reflect him. 
So if you're a man, if you're a woman, it's very important that we reflect him. So yes. anyway, so at that point in time, because I do operate in a, under a prophetic mantle, everything I wear, even my hair color is prophetic. It's the time yes. and the season that I'm in and the color represents the, um, uh, uh, the path of my destiny that I'm walking at, at this time and in this season. So that I've is been, wonderful. Yeah, wow. I've been lay on the Lord with everything, like everything, even in these things. Yes. I just love your bl blue. Yeah. I just love that blue, Karina. It's yeah, it's so you. ministering. Uh, yeah. Tell us about what that represents in the time yeah. and season. Well, Please. blue is, um, I've encountered Melchizedek quite a few times throughout the years. And mm -hmm. I have, um, I'm so honored. I'm so honored to have um, got a chance to grow in relationship with him, mm -hmm. uh, with Melchizedek. And blue is his color, how he comes to me. Um, okay. Also, you know, the color mm -hmm. of the spirit of Mike. So anyway, but blue, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in this time in the season is the fact that Melchizedek is here. I'm um, being trained. Um, you know, it's the season of the order of Melchizedek. So that's what it represents to me. Uh, it, it has a lot to do with DNA, with the bloodline, um, the season that I'm in. And th therefore, the color is honoring that, honoring Melchizedek and everything that he brings and everything that the Father has given to us, the abilities that he has given to us through the blood of Jesus to tap into in the season of Melchizedek. So, yes. yeah. Thank you. That's just gorgeous. And I, I also love the silver as well you've got going on. It, it's yes. just beautiful to look at. I would love to ask you a bit more about Romania and how you you actually came to transition from that country, which actually I know very little about. I lived in Italy for four years and I, I saw lots of people who came in from Romania, but, but I don't actually know much about it. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that happen for you? Well... <clears throat> When I was seven eight years old, uh, my parents received the Lord, and you know, Romania at that point in time was a communist nation, communist oh, wow. and so there was no freedom of religion, there was no sure. no future. So my parents received the Lord at that time, and based on the promises of the Lord to bring us into the land of milk and honey, wow, decided to uh, attempt to escape. Okay, oh. the communist regime, the hold of that demonic principality. Uh, there's yeah. whole people in bondage so we had attempted to escape two times um the first time we lost my dad on the border and i was seven years old now he's not dead uh i do have a book on that um so people can read it all the whole full testimony because it's a powerful one but uh and the second time we got captured now let me just paint the picture to you what would happen is if one person would be captured on the border that person would be killed or beaten to death. I mean, um, there are wolf dogs that were trained, you were their meal. So they were, they were starved. And so therefore, if they caught somebody on the border, these dogs would send somebody on, their, on the border, you would become their meal. So they would take care of you. So especially if you are a Christian, the hatred. Wow. So here is a group of nine people, all of them Christian, and a woman with three small children that have attempted to escape. So the miracles of the Lord, this is when at that very tender age, I saw the supernatural intervention of God into a natural situation that was death. I mean, absolute death. We were surrounded by wolf dogs. I mean, there was this one point we had to cross this big water. Obviously, I couldn't swim. So what they would do, the adults would, cr would cross us over. Now, here, imagine it's a border. It's dark. You see nothing. It's, it's so dark, you cannot even see your hand in front of your face. It was late fall, very cold. You're talking about Eastern Europe. Wow. Clothes were soaked on us. They got like iced, you know, like you, how your clothes get iced if you put them outside. It's freezing cold. So the, just to share this one little bit of just how awesome our God is. So they would cross us over through the water and they would say, keep crawling and we will catch up eventually. So here I am at the age of seven. This time I was eight years old. Uh, I don't see my mom. I see nobody. And I'm just crawling. Uh, I, it's so dark. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. And uh, I felt a little bush. So I thought I decided that I would stop there. And all of a sudden I hear these wolves, wolf dogs. That's what they are. They were coming around me and they were there. They were, and I got in a fetal position behind that bush and they were so close to me. I could feel their breath on my, on my legs and on my head. So at that point in time, I prayed and I said, I said, Jesus, 
because I, at that point in time, I already had such a close relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was, I'm different. I, I've always been different, you know? Um, and I, yeah. And I, yeah. and I said, please just take me out. I don't want to feel them rip because they, what they would do is rip your main artery. Wow. Okay, that's, that's how they're trained. And I said, I don't want to feel them attacking me. So just take me out. The Lord completely took me out. He took me to heaven and mm. I came back in my body. My mom said it was about an hour till she, th- the dogs left. Like they left, they left their meal there. And wow. my mom came and she, when my mom came, that's when my spirit, my spirit came back in my body and I came to the other time there were angels. I mean, the guards sensed us. There were, uh, they started shooting coming after us. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared leading us, the, leading the way. Now, let me just paint you this picture. We came from a village, okay, at night. Yes. There's many villages around the border. We had no idea what village we came from. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And the guards heard us. So we had to get up and you have to run. You don't have time. This is when my, we lost my dad. We were waiting for my dad. He never came back at that point mm-hmm. in time. Because he would go ahead to check the grounds for booby traps or for, you know, mm-hmm. soldiers or for these mud canals that were made, hoping that people would drown. You know, you had to cross mm-hmm. these mud canals. So uh, the guards started, you know, we heard the action and guns and everything. So we had to run, run back. Now, how in the world are you going to find the village among the villages from where you came from? What direction you're going in? But an angel of the Lord appeared in the dark leading us the way. Do you understand wow. that we got to the exact village? Not only that, you talk about a little village. They have dogs, they have roosters, they have animals that would alert. Yeah. Not an animal alerted, nothing. We crossed over, we jumped over fences of homes and we got to the exact same house. And one more thing I'm gonna share about this, as uh, this time was with my dad, the first time we had to go through mud canals to go on the path and they had a map and all of a sudden my parents realized we're going in a circle and my parents stopped and we prayed and this is what my mom said she said lord lead us exactly like you led the israelites with a cloud and a pillar of fire Mm -hmm. a cloud appeared out of nowhere in the sky not a big cloud was literally leading the way so we had to cross this big mud canal it literally went over the mud canal waited for us so we crossed it And then it led us back on the right path. This is God that we serve. This is the supernatural God that wants to invade our natural inabilities, our natural circumstances where the enemy says, no, I came to give you death. And God says, no, but I am above the enemy and I came to give you life. No matter what you're facing, you guys, I've, I've been there had guns put to my head that wolf dogs, you know, that, I mean, been there many circumstances yet our God is an mm-hmm. almighty, all able God that is there ready to meet you where you are at. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. His story Amen. that must be manifested through our lives. It's his yeah. testimony that must be manifested through our life. Not death. Yeah. yeah. Not sickness, yeah, absolutely. Not, disease, not poverty. It's life and life more abundantly and power. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. That is so powerful, Queen. Where is your dad now? My dad is fine. My parents are good. His story is amazing. It's just amazing what God did. This, the, the whole story of our escape was so, actually, um, when we got captured the second time, my dad had made it, okay? But when we got captured the second time, we had to go to trial. And our case was heard all over Romania because it was unheard of. Uh, Probably a few weeks before we tried, we attempted to escape. There was a pregnant mom with a small child that were captured and they were killed. And we understood when we met these guards, we understood why they told us that if one person escapes, they are being, they are beaten and starved, put out in the cold, treated like, like you would make a dog. Vicious. That's how the humans were treated. Their right to go to visit their family was completely cut off. And the guard looked at my mom and he said, ma'am, do you understand the anger we should feel towards you? And you're a Christian? And he said, yet we can't touch you. There is something about you we can't touch you. So our case was heard throughout Romania. We were at the bus station one day going to my grandmother and there were these women talking. Have you heard of that case? It was so supernatural and actually people and high government officials gave their life to the Lord 
three of them, I believe, because of what they saw and they could not deny. These communist leaders, they Amen. could not deny the power of Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. amazing. Awesome. Wow. A little bit fiery. So, you know, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I've seen little bits and pieces and clips, you know, around the internet with you. And I don't think there's uh, ever a time where you're not fiery, is there? <laughs> I try so hard, but it's just, you know, because, you know, when you know who you serve, when you know who yeah. you are, when you know the abilities that Jesus Christ gave to us and every one of that drop of blood and every mm -hmm. one of his wounds, of, of his, his skin being ripped to pieces, when, you, when we really understand who we are and the abilities that we have and whose we are, mm -hmm. there is no way, you know, and he manifests this, 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 um, this joy and this knowledge in different ways. And with me, it's just fire and passion. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So what would be the passion that uh, Father's got right now that's just, uh, I know you you speak, you teach, you yeah. you run a ministry. Yeah. What is the message that's coming out of you right now that Father's just got you on fire for? Yeah, you know, um, the, the foundation of the message is identity. Yeah. We have got to know who we are. You know, there's a scripture, I believe it's, um, I believe it's Galatians 4, where it says, as long as a child is an immature child, though he is the heir of the entire kingdom, there is no difference between him and a slave. What does that mean? We are born again. If we, when we stopped at the cross, Lord Jesus, I receive you. I'm saved. And that's great. I'm adopted. But there is so much more. We have to understand that the cross is just, listen, it begins with the cross. If mm -hmm. we don't go stop at the cross, we ain't got nothing. But the cross is not the end. The cross is the beginning. It's a portal. Yeah. It's an entry point for us to step into the fullness of our identity, the fullness of our blueprint, the fullness of our, of our destiny. So my, my thing is, it's identity is huge. Because when I really grasp, not, not only, oh, you know, I'm a child of God. But no, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm not only a friend of God. Okay. I was a friend of God. Now I'm trans I've transitioned to a, in a priest, a New Testament priest. And yeah. from there, whoa, I got the revelation. I'm a king. That's yeah. awesome. But you guys, there's a higher order that's come. And it's sonship. Mm -hmm. It's sonship. And that when we understand what's burning in me right now is identity of who we are as sons, as matured sons. Because let me tell you something. If you are a matured son, then you are going to be anointed and placed into a position of kingship out of your position of sonship. Mm -hmm. Because as we discussed, you know, this is what the Lord showed me. He said, Karina, it's awesome. My, 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 my children are realizing they stepped in from outer court, inner court, holy of holy, outer court, inner court, holy of holies. There's more though. Even after the Holy of Holies, the Holy of Holies is a, is a portal. It's a transitional place where we can go straight into the heart of the Father. Oh, my goodness. Is this yeah. okay? Because I'm on fire now. <laughs> Come on, keep going. Carry on. So, so this is what the Lord showed me. So is with, I'm, you were, there were friends, then there were New Testament priests and kings. That's awesome. But I'm the emperor of everything. Every dimension, every kingdom is under my empire. Now, as a king, though, that's awesome. And you have authority. A king only has authority in his king, in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. I cannot come, Gil, into your kingdom or Heather into your kingdom and enforce my authority. I cannot go into the devil's kingdom, just hear me, and enforce the fullness of my authority because my authority is in my kingdom because I'm the king in that little kingdom in the empire of my daddy. But when I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus died and I have the ability to be begotten of the father to become a son then not only do I have authority because I'm a son, a matured son. Now my daddy is anointing me as a king birth out of sonship. So now I have authority in this kingdom and this kingdom and this kingdom and nothing can stand against me because my authority comes from being a son. Then from that sonship position, I can be a friend. Then from that, do you understand? It's friend, priest, king. Now it's sonship. Friend, priest, king, ultimate. And those are the ones that will walk in the order of Melchizedek. That's yeah. on my heart. Identity and the order of Melchizedek. So yes. good. So yes. good. That's yeah. Spectacular. But I can tell you're, you're just a little bit passionate about that. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I love that. I love it. And and you were expressing that the other day and I was like, wow, that is so good. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. We need to, you guys, you know, my heart, I tell you, you asked me what's in my heart, the passion of it. You know, I look around, I want the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God, of our God and his government. Yes. And at this point in time, the darkness, now that we're focusing on it, but you know, you look at it long enough to know what you have to deal with. And then you go get the, uh, the mandates from God, from heaven. Yes. What is happening with children? And I know it's a, might be a taboo subject, but if it's okay, I want to go there. Yes, okay. go for it. That's part of my your time, Darina. Okay. Um, Darina, it's your what's time. happening your ch with children? You know, babies are being born to be sacrificed in order for the elite to step into power mm. they're sex trafficked and you're not talking about even teenagers you're talking about babies yeah so, uh, uh, i do a lot of research because of other projects that we have that have to deal with tv series that we're creating uh and it deals with the supernatural so we've done you know i know a lot of stuff let's just say to see that that is happening under our noses yeah churches on every corner Especially here in the South. I don't know, Gil, how it is in California. I've been there a few times, but here in the South and Heather in, in, in UK, here in the South, you have church on every corner and we're having mm -hmm. women's meetings and tea parties and that's great, a men's meeting. But the darkness is getting so bold and in our face. And oh, Karina. it seems like yeah. we're not having an impact. And my thing is, Daddy, the angels are not called to do this. They are called to come and join and help your sons to establish and kick some butt and put order back and save these children. Yes. Save, dispel the yes. darkness. How can we, you know, in darkness it's, it's good because that's when the light is seen. But if we're not becoming that light, that city on a hill, if we're not becoming the sons, <laughs> mature sons that we know who we are, how is the darkness going to be dispelled? Because we're not shining the light that we need to shine. Amen. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Which state are you in, Lena? Let's let's gather it. Let's let's do this. You know the, the church is in? Miss Nashville. Nashville, um, at Tennessee, mm -hmm. and and what are the abortion laws in in Tennessee? We we recently had a a, a time of of grieving for the, the the abortion laws that have come in in New York, and yeah, yeah. Um, Tennessee. How is Praise God, they passed a law, if I'm correct, uh, if I remember correctly, they just passed a law not long ago, maybe within two weeks, that um, they are, uh, they're not, they're, they're, I don't, I'm, I don't remember the exactness of it, but they are not agreeing with uh, this um, abortion, late term abortion, they're against it, so they voted, okay. so that's a praise God, you know, but yes. even with this, Thank it's, it's a trade, it's a trade on the blood of the innocent, and it's happening under our yes. Noses. And if we don't yeah. know who we really are and what we really have access to, it's continuing. That's what and, I think. Is you know, yeah, yeah, I think it's so powerful. I mean, th that people like you, you know, God is raising up people all, all across the globe, you know, people like you who are receiving the message and understanding that, you know, the, the ecclesia, the church has missed the boat. Oh, the yeah, ecclesia yeah. is beginning to understand who it is and that it's yeah. supposed to be operating as the government of God, bringing right. the kingdom yeah. into this earth realm and making right. a difference. And that's what you're yeah. talking about is because yeah. I know that Sacramento was actually listed, I think, in the top five uh, cities, at least in the U.S., uh, for sex trafficking at one time. Yeah. This was in the yeah. last 10 years. So I'm not sure where it's at now, but it's yeah. it's, it's an epidemic. It's bad. It really and you is. know this thing. And I know we're in this new move of the Lord and it's amazing and we're learning how to ascend and oh my gosh, it's so phenomenal. But my thing is, if we're just ascending to have fun and get drunk in heaven, we're missing What's it. What's the purpose? Too. Yes, yeah. very much. So we can be transformed, go into the heart of the Father, see what's in his heart and let's do it. Come on, exactly. Yes, let's go to court exactly. and legislate on these things yeah. and yeah. actually change something. We need to, you guys, we yeah. need to because... So far, the kingdom that's operating in darkness has had a lot of success, but no more. No more. It is changing. It is absolutely shifting. 
It is you absolutely know, shifting. You and I were talking about Chris Carter earlier and about his teaching on the, the cosmic shift. And it's like, yeah, it is shifting. It is. Absolutely. There's so much evidence for it everywhere we look when we really want to find it. It's there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. It, is, it is also interesting that America does seem to be having the abortion debate nationally. Yeah. And, and different states are coming out with their own take, their own answers on this. And I do believe a lot of states are coming out pro-life and are actually passing laws yeah. that stop abortion as a reaction and a response to the extremity we have seen in New Absolutely. York. So, so yeah. that is also very, very good. It's very, it's very good. You know, my thing is, again, we must bring change. And the mm. only change that's going to be brought is through us as the sons, because it says that all of creation is groaning, all, all of creation on yeah. earth, under the earth, in the heaven, in every dimension mm. is groaning for the sons of God slash, or you could put a slash, sons of creative light to bring yeah. back the desire and the purposes of God that are in his heart. It's up to us to create his kingdom government in every dimension on earth and then in every mm. dimension. It's up to us. He gave us a creative power. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and so that's my heart. It's like, we're going to heaven, we're ascending. It's awesome. But when we're there, let's, let's, let's be transformed and let's do something. Let's release yeah. our kingdom, uh, sonship uh, government. That is, you know, the kingship government that's birthed out of sonship all yeah. over the earth and bring change because creation is groaning, you know, but mm. we're so limited in, in the, our theological boxes. And again, theology is great. But if we stop just there, we're missing it. There's so much yes. more. So you know, again, my heart and my mandate is to teach people, teach us identity and the fullness of it. Because we yes. got a lot to do. Yeah. Amen. That's so awesome. Amen. That is awesome. So Karina, you have a lot of stuff going on. Um, what are some of the things, and we've been posting on Facebook, just so everybody knows, we've been posting some links, I should say, Wendy, your, your, yes. your, yeah, my amazing best friend here, yeah, posting stuff. Uh, I was so glad to meet her after, yeah, you she know, so much that she did in the background to help get this yeah. set up, and yeah. she's working in the background right now as well, and she's putting some things on Facebook with all your, uh, your books, your websites, yes. your ministries, yes. uh, what, what do you feel like you want to share about you know, some of the, some of the stuff the father's given you that you really want to get out there right now, what, what would that be? Yeah. Well, um, first, uh, the book, if people are interested to hear the fullness of the testimony, um, his story, and I was the child that wrote it down because I, I was writing it when I was 14 years old, I started writing it. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that's what the Lord said, write it down. Um, it's called the quest for freedom mm -hmm. and they can find that book on our website. And mm -hmm. I, I'm working on our second book. Um, it's unveiling the trading floors and stepping into the order of Melchizedek. Wow. Because trading yeah. floors are huge. We must mm -hmm. understand them. We must start applying them. You know, a lot of times we've been praying for years for some things and fasting, and we, we haven't seen changes in 20, 30 years. And it's like, Lord, we know you're real. Why aren't things changing? It's because there's legal rights because of trading floors. Yeah. So I believe yeah. that we have to learn. It's another one of these revelations that the father is unveiling for such a time as this so that we yeah. can go and apply yeah. it and get off those demonic trading floors, learn how to trade in the kingdom of heaven and step into the order of Melchizedek because Melchizedek is, is huge, hugely connected with trading. So I, I you know, so that's coming up. It's, uh, it's having its um, edit right now. So we're hoping in uh, what, two months, maybe it'll be out. Wow. So that's very exciting. Um, that is yeah, thank you. And we're yeah. having a few conferences. Um, we are, I'm very honored and blessed, you know, and I want to give honor to honors do because I, I love to honor people. I want to uh, honor first of all, Ian Clayton, because, you know, he is the father of this. And at least I consider him as the father of this move. Yes, he now, is the father he, of the heavenly realms. Man, I love him with all my heart. Steve and I, my husband and I love him and Kay. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Kay yet, but we love Ian, you know, because he has laid his life down 30 yeah. over 30 some years that this man has gone through so much so that the Lord can use him to create a pathway yes. for, for, for us Amen. Be able to step on things that he spent years and years, 30, 39, 35 years. So I want to honor this great man of God. I love him dearly. And I'm honored to have him come back in October. 
and Marios, yes. uh, Marios Alinas. I love Marios. Um, yes. Got a chance to meet him last year, October October third through fifth, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Wonderful! I so enjoyed your conference last year, Karina. It was amazing. It was, wasn't it? it was really special. It was so loving. It was so family. It was spectacular. That means a lot because you know that's that's yeah. my heart. My heart is just so love because it's all about love. Um, yeah. The Father's Amen. love, and if we don't have love, we can do everything, and it ain't worth nothing. Amen. So, so we have that conference, and I'm excited to do a conference with Christopher Carter in November here in Nashville. We awesome. love, really love Christopher. So yeah, so and then um, coming up in Nash in Franklin, Tennessee, Terry Spencer and myself, we will do a conference um, mm -hmm. May 11th. So we have I have quite a few That's things coming up. You have. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very so good. Very I'm just looking on the uh, Facebook page right now to see what, what's being posted. And yes, Wendy's doing uh, some diligent work, getting all that information posted there. So awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I would like to ask you, Karina, um, if you would say a little bit more about how you see the Order of Melchizedek, how you actually see us stepping into that, how you define it. Okay. That's a good question. I yeah. like that. So, um, <laughs> you know, absolutely everything must be built on relationship with the father. Yeah. Everything must be built on a desire for relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. And our heart is to, okay. You know, the Lord showed me uh, last year, I did, I did this teaching with Ian Clayton at the conference that I had here in Nashville. And it's the, the ancient pathways are being revealed right now. And the mm. Lord has taken us beyond the veil to find these ancient pathways where mystery is there waiting to take us. But yeah. the ancient pathways lead us into the heart of God, where there's yeah. multi-dimensions. It's a multi-dimensional place with different realms and different dimensions and different mysteries that have been reserved in the Father's heart. Okay? Yeah. So everything, if we want whatever we want, it must be birthed out of a desire to connect with the father. In other words, I want to do this, daddy, because I want to please you. Yes. It's, the motivation of our heart needs to be about loving the father, loving Jesus, loving the Holy Spirit, you know, all of that. Okay. So this is how I see, and Melchizedek is hugely connected with that. Okay. So, you know, the, the, the scripture talks about some, the order of Melchizedek has to do with changing your DNA because yeah. we must become like Jesus was. So if we look, uh, if we look in the scripture, I believe this is first John where it says, this is what Jesus says. He says, the prince of this world is coming, mm -hmm. but he has nothing in me. Right. Okay. Right. right. Jesus here was talking about his DNA. In other words, there is no mutation. There is no trigger. There's no hook in my DNA where the enemy, where the prince of this world can hook himself in and have power and authority over me because Amen. I have the DNA of the father. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Amen. Go back in the word. Okay. And then this is what it says that those, uh, uh I'm going to paraphrase it. Um, uh, the ones that are the ones that are coming to the kingdom, kingdom of God. So it says those that are adopted do not continue to sin. So when we become saved, we are adopted. Mm -hmm. We have been adopted into a new family and we try to abide by the rules of the family. Mm -hmm. But in every translation, that scripture has a big B-U-T, but. Yes. And it says, but those that are begotten of the father, the devil touches them not. Amen. And here we see, yeah, here we see that there's two different things here. You see the cross is salvation, and that's awesome. It begins there, adoption. Yeah. However, there is the covenant of adoption that we receive when we go through the cross, when we step in the fullness of the abilities of the Father through the blood and the body of Yeshua to literally transform our DNA. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the Bible says that Jesus, okay, Melchizedek mm -hmm. was a priest when there was no nation of Israel. So right. I believe Melchizedek was a priest in another dimension. Okay, yes. we won't go into that right now, but, and it says that Jesus, now the Bible says that Melchizedek had no earthly genealogy. Mm -hmm. So there was no imprint in him of a father or a mother, the mutation and the sins that were, the trading that was, that were done. Yes. He had no earthly genealogy. 
And the Bible says that Jesus came after the order of Melchizedek. Now that word after does not, that word after means like, you know, wow. like I'm painting this picture after yeah. that one, yeah. just like. Mm -hmm. but after is in following because Jesus came after. Listen, the ones that are called to step into the order of Melchizedek are the ones that are not willing to stop at anything to go beyond to say, Lord, I take the sword of the spirit and I ask you the double, the, the double edged sword and I ask you to divide my soul and my spirit. And then the scripture says, remember, then dividing between the bone and the marrow. Yeah. That's where DNA is made. And then dividing the intents of the heart. So this, there's a scripture that says that there are those that, uh, so 30, 60 and 90%, right? Okay. Yeah. And they receive yeah. that. Okay. Hold on. I'm, I'm going around, but I'm going to tie okay. it all together. Okay. <laughs> So the ones that are called to walk in the order of Melchizedek are the ones that are not willing to stop at giving themselves 30%. Mm -hmm. They're saying, okay, there's ones that say, okay, I'm going to give you 30%. I, I've spent 30% time with you, Jesus, and I'm happy. To, I'm saved when I die, go to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Then there are the ones that are willing to go 60% of the way. Oh, Jesus, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. God bless you. You're doing amazing. There are the ones that are willing to go 90% of the way. And that's phenomenal. But remember that um, Abraham gave, gave Melchizedek a tenth. So there are the remnant, the 10% that are saying, I'm not willing to stop. I want to go the full 10% of the way, add the 10 to the 90, so I will be 100% transformed. Do you understand? The ones that are going to walk in the order of Melchizedek is the ones that will sacrifice everything that will go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm not willing to stop you know I mean? anything. I'm not willing to stop even a 90%. I want to go the rest of the 10% so I can make oh, it a hundred percent so that my DNA could be transformed into the DNA of Yeshua through the blood Amen. of Jesus. And when I know that when I take that blood, it's literally taken in the record of the DNA of Yeshua. Transform that, Lord. Transform my DNA. So we're going after every little hook, every mutation, every sin, every trade. We are not willing to stop. And though the order, I'm telling you, the order of Melchizedek is for the matured sons. I believe those are the remnant. That's good. I believe yeah, those are good. the remnant that will do crazy stuff. Now, yeah. the, the, it's amazing. You know, the other ones, the other 90%, that's awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. They're, we need them. But I'm telling you, not everybody will walk in the order of Melchizedek. Not because it's not right. for everybody. It's because it's for whosoever chooses. And, yeah. you know, I, I told you this, Gil, uh, the other day, you know, that scripture that says, many are called, but few are chosen. And I never quite got it. I'm like, Daddy, what do you mean mm -hmm. by that? And he stopped me in the midst of me preaching at the conference with Ian that we had last year. And he said, you know what? Your choice chooses you. You have a free will. He gave us a free will. My choice. It's for whosoever. So if I say, daddy, I want it all. I don't want not one drop of your blood to fall to the ground, but I want to apply it to transform my entire DNA to have the DNA of the begotten son of Yeshua, because he's the firstborn of many. Amen. Amen. I choose to step into that order. By laying it all down. And then the devil, I don't look like him. My frequency is not like him. I don't, you know, smell is a frequency. Nothing in me looks like him. Therefore, yeah. I become transformed on the inside and transfigured on the outside to become a son of creative light. Amen. Oh, blue light of Melchizedek. There's your blue. There's that is blue. awesome. <laughs> so that's how I see Melchizedek. You know, Love that's it. how I see him. That's how, you know... I trade with him a lot, you know, um, on the sea of glass. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's amazing. It's an honor and it's a huge order that God is calling us. And yeah. it's for who, yeah. I'm not more special than anybody out there. We can all do it. It's mm -hmm. just whosoever chooses choice is what chooses us. Yes. I choose it. I choose it. Cause I'm radical, <laughs> you know? So yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are absolutely just completely sold out and they're 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 wanting to be. I mean, I think in their hearts, they're already at that 100 percent. They've they've given everything. Yes. And yet they don't know about this. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so I'm just it's like we have such a work to do in the sense of just yeah. at yes. least at least getting the message out yes. that yes. this is this is where mature sons are headed. 
Absolutely. You know, I think of Colossians 2.10 and I just, uh, you know, that, that we are complete in Christ. And what is that complete, com- completeness? I, I think it's partly, like you said, what we choose. Absolutely. And so, but yeah. we, but it's done, it's, you know, it's in Christ. And so part of what I, I preach and teach is that we got to, part of the mission is to break off the matrix of lies that the enemy has over us. Right. Absolutely. Because we are, the job's already done. I mean, yeah, Christ did it, done. and in him we are complete. So we yeah. just got to stop believing in the lies so that we can walk out yeah. what he's already made us to be. Absolutely, because, you know, the battle is in the mind. Mm-hmm. The Lord's been yeah. speaking about the mind a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, and just, you know, we know that there's something called the cellular memory, which yeah. I would just easily translate into the DNA memory. Absolutely. And I've shared this on a couple other shows, but... Um, you know, they're using DNA right now to record messages, to record music on, and then they'll send it to another, you know, a lab where they can actually, you know, re- listen to it. They can pull it off. So, and and four ounces of DNA is enough to hold the entire, all the information that the world has to offer. Four ounces of DNA. So it's already in us. Absolutely. It's recorded. Absolutely. I mean, and he said, I put eternity in your, in your heart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so much, you know. He came to give us life. You know, the law of sin and death is done away with. But because we've been so programmed in our DNA by the demonic religious spirit mm-hmm. working hand in hand with the Antichrist spirit, you know, we're, we don't see. That's why I say, that's why I keep saying, you know, it's like we got to really understand our true identity. Mm-hmm. What is that? Not, oh, I know who I am. Oh, I'm a son. I'm a friend. I'm a king. No, 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 no. Do you understand? Because the mind, the Lord showed me, he's, I'm, I'm in this process of him showing me some amazing stuff again. The mind is one of the most powerful weapons. Mm-hmm. The most powerful weapons that the enemy uses against us. Mm-hmm. And if we understand what putting on the mind of Christ literally means, do you know that they discovered 11 dimensions in the human mind? Hmm. Dimensions. Hello. <clears throat> I'm talking about the mind of Christ. The multifaceted, multi-dimensional abilities of Christ. We yeah. have it. We just need to let it, you know, uh, let that understanding come and let it mold and, and melt into our mind so our mind can become his mind. Mm-hmm. And when we understand that and we apply the blood of Jesus. When we take communion with that understanding, like you said, there's many that have sold 100% of the way. And yeah. we're just using just little, you know, just little things that the Lord's revealing. And when we apply, because communion is the key, that's what transforms us. Mm-hmm. But it's in us, or it's unlocking it because yeah. eternity is in us. There and you go. Yeah. Immortality. Hello. He said, I've given you, you know, everlasting life now, not when we die. So it's already in us. Come on. Yeah. And our faith, the way we think, the way we understand is what opens us up so that when we engage communion, we create that arc. And it opens up that ability in us, in the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is inside of us. So then that opens up and whatsoever is from the kingdom of heaven will flow and connect with the kingdom of God that's in us and will explode from the inside out, transforming us. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, one. So it was interesting because I was just thinking about, you know, how, the, how you know, the battles in the mind and, and then yes. a few of the other things that you were think you started sharing. It's like I was just processing some of it because. I think that, again, is part of the shift that we're in, that people are coming to the realization that it is, it is already in us. It is yes. already done. And yes. it's that shift. It's a thing of faith, but it's a shift to where you actually fully, completely believe yes. who you are. Absolutely. You just don't see it in some far off distant way, you know, or after I die and go to heaven. No, Absolutely. you see it and you begin to know it. Yes. And live it out. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, you can even look at the superhero movies. I mean, do we know why there's so many superhero superhero movies out there? Hello, God is trying to talk to us. And a lot of them access their ability. Mm -hmm. The mind. So it's not put on the mind of Christ, not just a cliche that we're saying or just a little verse that we go. No, I put on the mind of Christ. Seeing yourself putting on that multidimensional mind that has that uh, multidimensional uh, uh, levels of understanding of mysteries of these ancient paths that lead us back into the heart of the father where mysteries are and we can yeah. step into them it's, we have it we just have yeah. to engage it by faith like believe it like really 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 believe it yes i love you know? some of those movies 
like the yeah. movie Lucy. With oh yeah, yeah. Morgan Freeman <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. I like that Scarlett one. Johansson about. You know, there's truth. There's truth in there. There's yes. It's not yeah. If we used all of our mind, what would happen? Yes, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And see, that's so, what the Christ is, though. That's what yes. the mind of Christ is. That we become superhuman. See, like part of, yeah. part of what it is, I think, that hangs us up is we're constantly trying to look for that external thing that's going to fix us and make us right and give us that power and give us that authority. And like you've already said, it's already in us. Yeah, it's already in us. And and even if we were just to you know, realize that and then begin to center in and around the fruit of the spirit, Holy Spirit living in us, yeah. you know, just take the first three, love, joy, and peace. Absolutely. That we were to a, able to just rest in that place of love, joy, and peace and know that, man, if this is all I ever got out of life, I would be done. I would be fine. I don't need that million dollars to make me happy. I don't need that specific spouse, you know, that's going to make me happy. I'm already happy. And then from that place, I believe, the desires of the heart that Father's already planted in us and who we are begins yeah. to draw the things Absolutely. that are supposed to come to us so that we can accomplish what God's... Well, you know, through. remember that scripture, seek first my kingdom. Now, let's pause there because we've mm -hmm. all heard it and I'm just, I'm just getting the revelation now. Where is this kingdom? Where is the kingdom of God? It's inside. So let's look at the Absolutely. verse the other way. Thank you, Jesus. Seek first my kingdom. Mm-hmm. And then everything. That's it. I've actually, I'm actually working on putting some uh, teachings together on, on this very subject because it is, you know, so people, I mean, if, if, if they weren't even trying to become mature sons, yeah. if they could just get that one thing of understanding that they already have everything they need. Absolutely. And so that from that place, which is from the kingdom Absolutely. begins. Yeah. It, it, it will change your life. It will change your world. Absolutely. Literally will is everything and then yeah. when we do this everything that's in here is going to re release a frequency and a sound to attract everything absolutely in our destiny scroll that that is in and upon our blueprint and is going to attract it to us we don't need to yeah. fight for it it's going to come because we have first sought the kingdom of god let that come out from the inside out unfold us uh-huh that frequency and that will draw everything in the, the that's secret good. The secret has nothing on the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming you know what I mean. The, the, I do know what you mean. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, who, who yeah. built the law of attraction? You know, that's, that's the father already put it in us. The frequencies draw what, what, whatever we're putting off. Absolutely. So it's, it's already there. We didn't need. Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. our thoughts are frequencies. So imagine when we even think, okay, even if we don't believe it at first, but we think the kingdom of God is in me. I have all the abilities in me. You think it, then that thought is going to um, uh, uh, push you or give you That's the faith cool. or the push to speak the words out. And then those mm -hmm. words are releasing that particular, it's a creative power. Thoughts, frequency, words, uh, uh, turns uh, frequency into matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I got I got a lot of stories I could tell on that where I'm, I'm walking in that and it's just absolutely wonderful. I'm only on a teeny tiny level of it, but just that teeny awesome. tiny level is like an atom bomb and yeah, the, the rest is yet to come. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's so awesome. So good. So we got about five more minutes. Heather, you got any more questions or, or Karina, you have anything got to share in these last five minutes? Um, well, I have just, just loved, I've just loved spending time with you, Karina. It, it just it's just wonderful. And it's been so interesting hearing everything the Lord is just bubbling up inside you and, mm -hmm. and, and revealing to you. I was, I was especially intrigued to hear about the, the 11 dimensions we have in our mind. <laughs> have you been reading that somewhere? Uh, is there anywhere that, that we can? Yeah, Caroline, you... It's, it's, it's uh, science has put articles out about it. So you can just Google it and it'll. Up yeah, there. and I think Caroline Leaf talks about 63 or 68 dimensions. Um, wow. You know, she's a neurologist, Christian neurologist. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot in there. There's a wow. lot of them. But I well, do want to encourage, you know, the viewers that no matter what, I, mm -hmm. is it okay if I just speak to whoever? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to sign off here in a minute and do the same. So go ahead. So I just want to encourage you, whoever's watching, if you're watching this live or if you're going to watch it on replay, I want to encourage you, no matter what you're facing in your life, 
no matter what you're going through, know that there is a God that number one loves you, mm -hmm. loves you so much that he gave his only son to die a horrible death, but he didn't stop there. He gave us and you the ability to step into the fullness of resurrection life and resurrection mm -hmm. power. Amen. So that means whatever looks dead in your life, whatever situation you're facing, whatever circumstance you're facing, and death has spoken over those situations, know that death has been defeated, that Jesus Christ gave you now everlasting life over yes. that situation that you're Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Come on. You froze there, Karina. I don't know if you can hear us at all. Facing nuts that I'm facing right now. I encourage you, just seek him. Just seek his heart. Just, just you know, put some soaking music and just spend time with daddy. Just say, daddy, I just want to feel you. I want to, I want to feel you. I want to, yeah. I want you to show me your love. And I'm telling you, no matter what you're going through, there is a shift coming and there's a breakthrough yeah. coming because he is ready for you to step into the fullness of the victory that the cross and the gate that takes you through the cross has for you. Amen. 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 Well, Karina, thank you so much. This has been powerful, really, really powerful. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to say there is a little bitty, probably about a five to 10 second place where you froze and we okay. didn't get to hear that message that was in there. And I, it, the thought that came to mind and it was from revelation where I, I think it says the seven thunders, you know, spoke Yes. And, and uh, he was about to write him down and he, he was told not to. Right. Uh, I was just getting the feeling that there were something you were saying there. And it's like, boom, going to hide that session right there. Those few words, because there was something really powerful there. But it's going to come out later at some point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to be with both of you. Both you. Gil Thank and you, Karina. We love you. Love Big you. hug. Thank you. See you Thank soon. you so much. Thank you, Gil. God bless you. All right. Bless you. Thank you, Heather. Everyone, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.